So yes, I, uh, I'm, most of my time these days is spent uh, in blockchainlabs.nz. Uh, myself and my colleague Paul over here co-founded co this. And uh, our mission is to empower organizations to create decentralized solutions with global impact. So imagine if I give you an apple. Uh, you, I want to give you an apple. You live on my street. Uh, I don't quite trust you. You've got a funny haircut. You come home late at night. But I want to give you this apple. So I walk up to you. I hand it to you. We went through a value transfer exchange. Uh, didn't need anybody else to help us. Now let's imagine if I want to give you a digital apple, uh, a little bit harder. So I might take a picture of that apple. I might attach it to an email and send it to you. But who has the, the digital apple? Because uh, I might have taken six copies of it and sent to six of my friends. You might have done the same thing. Uh, it becomes a lot harder when, you, when you're talking digital assets. So this is known as the, the double spending problem and something that has been taxing some of the smartest computer brains uh, for, for decades. And essentially, uh, nobody could really solve this problem, the double spending problem. And so kind of the workaround uh, is, is Harold. Uh, so Harold also lives on our street, just down the road. Salt of the earth kind of a guy. Uh, I've known him for years. You've known him for years. We both trust him. So we are going to ask Harold to keep a ledger, a list of who owns digital apples in our street. So when I give you my digital apple, uh, me and you, we both go to Harold and say, can you keep this ledger up to date uh, around who owns digital apples? Cool, fine. Uh, now, the, we uh, need to trust Harold. We need to trust Harold to lock his house up at night. We need to trust Harold uh, not to... Uh, lose the list or corrupt it or not back it up. We, need, we, we hope he doesn't come back drunk and use it as toilet paper. We hope he doesn't go senile. We hope he doesn't sell that information to Bob up the street because Bob uh, could use that information around digital apples for some other purpose that we don't know about. So we're putting a lot of trust in Harold. Uh, now, that is essentially how our entire global commerce system has been built on that workaround because we couldn't work out a way to solve the double spending problem. And OK, what's, what's the problem with that? Well, there's a few problems with that. Uh, the internet globalization has have meant that those intermediaries, in, intermediary companies, the heralds, the banks, the, the financial institutions, the entire global economy, Ubers, Facebooks, Googles, all these guys, they've become too powerful. They've become monopolies. We've hit the boundaries. They control our data. They control us. We've become the product. And it's led to a very fragile and dangerous ecosystem. So an interesting thing happened around uh, eight years ago. A, a person under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto released some, uh, a white paper and some source code. And he, she, or they, I'm going to call him a he just because it's easiest, uh, uh, he solved the double spending problem. Okay? He brought together some clever technologies. Uh, all of them kind of existed before, but he brought them together in a very clever way that nobody had thought of and, and solved the double spending problem. Uh, and so he, he created this form of digital cash that he called Bitcoin, and but Bitcoin was the first example of this of, of a blockchain, and really the clever bit was the blockchain infrastructure that, that he, he built underneath that. Uh, so Bitcoin was the first blockchain out there. So uh, how does the blockchain work? The blockchain is the is a really exciting bit of, of Satoshi's invention, and you kind of don't really need to know the details of of the blockchain, just like you don't need to know the details of the plumbing around email or uh, browser. But there are some really important things that, that you, do need, you do need to understand about it. And so the blockchain is like Harold's ledger. It's like a long list, a, a spreadsheet. But it's a very long spreadsheet, a very long list in the case of Bitcoin. So Satoshi's first transaction is at the bottom of this, this list. And a transaction that I might do with you today appears or will appear on that top of that list. So anybody who has a full copy of that ledger, that long spreadsheet, knows the complete state of the system and knows exactly who owes what Bitcoin at any point in time. So, but ha this ledger, the blockchain ledger, is different from Harold's ledger or from uh, our bank's ledger. So on the left-hand side here, we've got uh, our cu the current systems, our banks, Uber, Facebook, any centralized system, any centralized database, database with lots of security around the edge to stop the bad people getting in. On the right-hand side, we've got the blockchain decentralized model. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer system. So each node on the network has a copy of the database. And this database is essentially copied out to every other node. And in the case of Bitcoin, we've got about 30,000 nodes out there. So each node has a copy. And it's, it's not restrictive. Anybody can become a node. Uh, you don't need to be special. You, you can go home tonight and download the software and become a node, get a copy of that database. It's transparent. 
uh, and it's decentralized. So the system is constantly trying to update, synchronize each node in the network, make sure they all have the same copy of truth. So that decentralization of information gives it some uh, two really key and unique properties that we've never had before. Uh, number one, uh, it's not controlled by anybody. So the people behind open public, open source blockchains like Bitcoin, uh, the developers, if they want to release a new version, they can't just do it. They've got to, they can propose a new solution. They've got to convince the community, the nodes and network, to upgrade their servers. And if most people don't, it won't, go, it won't happen. So it's driven by the community. It's not, and it's transparent. The second thing is that the decentralization, the, crypt the cryptography, the maths, uh, means that it's essentially unstoppable, unhackable, immutable. So when you put information into this database, if you think about it, because you've got, say, 30,000 computers, to take it down, to get rid of that database, you'd have to take down every single computer. Uh, 30,000 computers all around the world, so a very hard thing to do. Uh, and also, you can't hack into it, because you'd have to hack into, uh, it turns out, at least 51% of these, the nodes at the same time to change that information. And there's a lot of people who would love to hack into it. It's got a market capitalization of $93 billion, I think, uh, as of today. So uh, it gives us this, this, these uh, these really unique, these re really unique features. So another another way to think about the blockchain is a database. It's so secure it can be made public. Completely different from most of our databases, which uh, are closed uh, and controlled systems with lots of security around the edge. So a cryptocurrency is a currency that's controlled by an international community driven by international community-driven laws of transparent, open mathematics, and not by the laws of people in government. Not by the laws of people in government. So, soon after Bitcoin turned up, a bunch of people realized, hey, this immutable, unstoppable, un unhackable database could be used for other things. In fact, anything that has, got, has value to humanity, a vote, uh, a, a deed titled deed transfer, if you don't qu quite trust your government to manage that, um, uh, a marriage certificate, a birth, anything that's important and perhaps we don't want one individual government to, to own and control or one individual corporation to control that information. So, uh, yes, a whole bunch of projects uh, started up and are continuing to, continuing to do that. The next story in the blockchain, uh, the next chapter in the blockchain story is something called Ethereum. And uh, a guy called, a 19 year old guy called Vitalik, uh, who we brought over uh, in May to New Zealand, he decided that, hey, this, this, this database, this decentralized database concept is kind of cool, but wouldn't it be great if we could write complex business rules and we could decentralize those as well? So we could. Could, could we create this code, this decentralized code execution engine? Uh, and that's exactly what he did. So he, he created a new blockchain called Ethereum, again, open source, community driven, uh, and it went live sort of a year or two ago, and, and again has changed the game. And this is where, where the term smart contracts comes, which is a slightly confusing term because it may not be smart and it may not be a contract in a legal sense, but essentially a self executing. Uh, set of business rules uh, that if you and I agree on those rules, we put them on the blockchain, they will execute as programmed. And it, again, it's a bit of a mind blowing sort of concept, but I d if I can use the, the example of gambling. So let's say I want to build a gambling website today. I might, uh, with the traditional technologies, I'll create a, a website and I'll have a database and some business rules. Uh, I might have a virtual dice that, that you throw. But you probably wouldn't use my gambling website because you wouldn't trust me. Uh, you, you'd be worried that I'd be skewing the odds so you wouldn't win as often as you should. Uh, so, but let's imagine I could create a gambling website using blockchain technology, using smart contracts, where the, the rules of what happened when you threw that virtual dice were transparent, they were immutable, I couldn't change them uh, even if I wanted to after I published them. And that is exactly what's happening. So people are creating gambling websites, uh, provably fair websites uh, to do that. So what it does, it changes the trust relationship. You don't need to trust me, you're trusting the protocol. Okay? And if you take that gambling example and if you apply it to the whole of the rest of the e-commerce system, uh, you can start to see the implications of this world. So we've got this new trust protocol uh, that, uh, that is potential, has got the potential to, to change the way our systems work. Banking without banks, uh, taxi without Uber, Airbnb without Air Airbnb, social media without Facebook. Uh, that's, that's the potential here. So it turns out the f one of the first sort of killer apps of this second generation uh, Ethereum based blockchains uh, is capital raising, ICO. And you may have heard of an ICO, uh, initial coin offering. And essentially what ICOs do is, is give, give us a way to democratize capital raising. 
Uh, and, and it's an incredible thing that's really sprung up only after, after o over the last few months. But essentially what happens is, and, and we've been involved in about 15 of them, uh, essentially what happens is you create, and anybody can do this, you create a tokenized asset, and a token is, sits in this weird space between a currency, a, a share in a company, and a fuel for the ecosystem that you're trying to build. So, and that's one of the problems at the moment. The regulators, the lawmakers, can't get their head around what is it. Uh, so they're, they're working on that at the moment uh, without too much success. Uh, but essentially, you, 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 you create this token, and then you go you, and you create a, a vision, a white paper, and you get all the hype, and then you say to people, hey, if you like my idea, buy my token. Swap your existing digital currency, your Ether or your Bitcoin, for my token. And you raise money by that, like that, and then you list your token on exchanges, and it becomes a tradable commodity and takes market value and either goes up or down. And uh, yeah, so uh, some of the figures, you know, some of the amounts of money, so the ones with stars, the ones we've been involved in uh, helping them, but you know, incredible. So First Blood, a sports gaming platform, 5.5 5 .5 million this is US in 10 minutes. Uh, Status, status to IM, so the, uh, there's a Kiwi and Aussie guy, uh, so we, we work with them, they raised 100 million, million US in three hours, almost brought the Ethereum blockchain to a standstill, uh, you know, s small team that, that they're based in Zoog now, uh, and then we get into the platform plays, EOS, Tezos, you know, getting a sort of quarter of a billion dollar, dollars raised in, in very short amounts of time, so incredible figures, and this has really happened, uh, taken off in the last few months. Uh, and you know, g getting great headlines. I think there's about, about, about now two, 2 billion now raised and surpassing other forms of, of capital raising. Uh, so changing the game. So the other way to think of this ho whole world is in layers. So we've got the internet pr protocol, which turned up uh, around 20 years ago and, ga and disrupted a whole lot of business because it, it allowed us to uh, move information across the globe at near zero cost. We now have this blockchain trust protocol, this, this mechanism to allow untrusted parties to interact without a trusted third party. But what the blockchain doesn't do out of the box is to allow groups of people to, to work towards common shared goals, organizations or community-driven projects. So we need something else. We need something on top of the, 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 the blockchain protocol. And this is what a lot of these ICOs are doing. They're raising money for DAOs, de decentralized autonomous organizations. So these are organizations, but different from traditional organizations in that the rules, uh, the governance isn't controlled by small groups of, of people behind boardroom doors. Uh, they're in open, transparent sets of rules on the blockchain in smart contracts. And generally, these fall into f a few groups, so rep rep reputation, some sort of unit of measure that reflects uh, uh, the, the, the degree of alignment of an individual within a, a group of peers. Uh, it may be some sort of value distribution, some sort of unit that may be issued uh, uh, when a person with reputation contributes something to the system. Uh, we have voting systems, so people, again, it may be weighted towards people with higher reputation in the system can vote and, and influence the direction of the organization, but ultimately organizations that can have evolutionary pu purpose and, and, and can, but also can support deviations from, from that thinking. That's what we've seen in the crypto world, is that if there's disagreement within the community, the, the chain can fork, it can break into two, and you have two things and people go off in, the, in, in different directions. That's a, a healthy part of an ecosystem. Uh, so, uh, so let's imagine a, f a few examples of some of the stuff that's going on. So Uport, let's imagine a system that gives you self-sovereign identity, a way for us to take control of our own identity. Uh, that's, that's being built. We've, we built a prototype for DIA to illustrate that. Uh, a, a, a social network which didn't uh, require us to give over all our information to some centralized profit-driven entity like Facebook or Twitter. So have a look at the status.am white paper. That, that's part of the, their mission. Uh, Decentralizing power, uh, so peer-to-peer -peer power, so, so, uh, so creators of, of power and, 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 and consumers can trade on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. They're based in Perth, they raised 33 million via ICO last month. Uh, uh, Light Alchemist, so this was a conversation that happened at the last New Frontiers uh, between a group of us, uh, and that's now the papers, now the white paper is now being written, so this, the concept is connecting uh, home growers, local growers of food, with, with people who want to uh, cook food and with people who want to eat meals and with kids on e-bikes uh, ar around the middle. So really exciting vision to, to sort of disrupt the, the current food distribution system. Uh, and the data commons. So again, there's a conversation with uh, James Mansell, who I, uh, he was here yesterday, so at breakfast on that last New Frontiers. So James was the lead author for this report. This is really about uh, moving data 
out of the silos within government and, and society into the data commons. And really interesting report, uh, and the blockchain sort of lends itself perfectly to that world. Uh, so really, the, the, I think that the, the challenge or the opportunity here is to put New Zealand at the centre of this stuff. Uh, we are seeing a new economy being born. Uh, let's use so a bunch of us, there's about sort of 10 of us who've been working for many years uh, in this space to try and lay the foundations. <coughs> we've, we've run two successful conferences, last one in May when we brought Vitalik and Andreas and 20 other people, the, the top people in the world to Auckland. Uh, we've got... Uh, We've got, uh, yeah, in the, last, in the last six months, so Blockchain Labs, we've helped uh, 12 organizations raise over $200 million around the globe uh, via ICOs. We've got active meetup groups in Wellington and Auckland. Uh, we've got companies like Brave New Coin and Centrality doing great things from New Zealand. Uh, and we're working with Yosef to try and lobby central government to try and uh, create some sensible legislation so that we attract some of this innovation to New Zealand because there's, there's a huge opportunity. We've got a new exchange about to launch. Uh, Stephen's here from the CEO from Dasset, so that, that, that's going to make it a lot easier for mum and dad uh, in, you know, who wants to play in this space and perhaps put some money into Bitcoin and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so I think we, we've got a huge opportunity. So, and uh, yeah, I'd love to speak to the lady after the, who presented before me within government uh, and see, see what we can do. Thank you.